Tonight on The Struggle. Millions of people angry at Optus. What's new? Why funerals are the latest must-see TV events. And a disturbing look at the far corners of social media. Gender parity is a constant concern of our resident alpha male, Max Payne. This week, he takes a look at a global political trend. Folks, I want to take you on a little trip to Italy, home of pizza, pasta, and speedos. It's also the birthplace of modern fascism, which is making a sudden comeback. Exactly 100 years after Mussolini's initial rise to power, a political party with direct ties to Italy's fascist history has just won a national election. Which is 100 years too late, if you ask me. Been waiting on this one for a while. This party has the best name too, Brothers of Italy, or Fratelli d'Italia. Man, I love frat parties. Went to one back in the day, I ended up butt chugging an entire keg of Fosters with THE Alan Jones. But back to the political party. Many observers are concerned with its senior leadership's connections to the Hungarian political strongman Viktor Orban and the strongest of mans, Vladimir Putin. Great picture. Can't wait for next year's calendar. I honestly don't see what the problem is. Me and Putin are tight. He personally messaged my Telegram group chat to say that Donald Trump needed those documents that they found at Mar-a-Lago to fight off the interdimensional pedo vampires. Their weakness is QAnon conspiracy videos with three views or less. He also told me to buy more dodgy supplements and NFTs, but Vlad, buddy, I've had enough. Push moi. Anyway, Let's see who leads this strong fraternity of mustachioed men. What? A woman? First Liz Truss in the UK, and now this? Come on, girls. It's fascism week, not fashion week. Fascism. You know what? Fine. If women want to take men's jobs, livelihoods, and inclination for being radicalized into far-right ideologies, be my guest. Bring on Kate Mussolini, Bella Habitler. Bring on Kim KKK. Just don't come crying to me when you start finding it too hard to be a dictator without a dick. They can even take my job while they're at it. You know what? I'm going on vacation. Later, Ren. And as the Italians say, live in fas fascista loca. Good to know we'll never see you again, Max. Anyway, time to indulge in some odd fantasies in the dungeon. Friends, family and lovers, I know you've been thinking about me. It's me, Dominatrix, your favourite leather enthusiast. Now, we love all kinds of spicy activities and I want everyone to feel as comfortable as I allow. But I've got to say, some of you naughty people are starting to take it too far. Some people have watched a new Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix series and decided he's hot and cannibalism is sexy. Now, I do love a good eating out, but this? You're nasty. People on Twitter watched Evan Peters play a murderer for the 69th time and decided they would like a piece of that. Dharma also wanted a piece of that, multiple pieces, and look where that got him. I think all the consensual choking has made everyone a bit funny in the head. Because this, Evan Peters, Ross Lynch, they are actually attractive. But the actual Dharma looks like an overgrown Hitler youth crossed with a naked mole rat. Now, see, ugly people deserve love too. But this, it's too much, even for me. I just think there are much sexier crimes to thirst over. A sexy accountant doing white-collar crimes in the middle of the week. Mm. A tall, dark and handsome man committing petty theft equaling $5,000 or more. Ah. A hot young girl shoveling Sephora lipstick down her woody sleeve. Ooh, I'm just getting excited thinking about it. But being so bad is so hot, but not being a rapist cannibal piece of shit that ruined countless lives? Mm. That's even hotter. Well, that's it from me. Back to you, Ren. 
the sound advice. Now let's check in on our Inner North correspondent, Apathetic Ashley. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals have called upon women to initiate a sex strike against men who eat meat. Personally, this doesn't affect me. I've been boycotting men since my 2019 self-love revolution when I realised I was exclusively attracted to myself. Many people don't know, but the A in LGBTQIA+, actually stands for Ashley. <laughs> Sadly, not all of us are so fortunate to wake up to this. A lot of women, gays and theys are still sleeping with meat-eating men. And yes, I get it. You're individuals with <clears throat> human needs. But the planet is dying, people. Wake up. Water is being polluted, and I'm not talking about your wet vagina. I'm talking about the oceans of this world, the rivers, the Great Barrier Reef. We all need to be doing our part for Mother Earth. Luckily, I'm here to help. Introducing my brand new cruelty-free vibrator, the Ashlanacea Vibrator. <laughs> Designed with your utmost pleasure in mind, it's my gift to the world and your gift to the planet. It comes with six settings, one for each letter of my name. It also comes with an inbuilt camera, so you can start an OnlyFans and become a conscious influencer, just like me. Why open your bussy, pussy, or thussy to the greedy carnivorous men of the world when you can please yourself with $80 and this bad boy? Choose abstinence, not ecological collapse. Choose self-submission, not carbon emissions. Choose the Ashlanacea Vibratia and join the hashtag Nut for the Planet movement. Available now through the link in my bio. Thanks, Abby Chatfield. I mean, Ashley. Now let's head over to Straya Zoo animal extraordinaire, Bindi Prickle. Hi, Ren. Today I thought it would be really fun to bring one of Straya Zoo animals to the interview. That is a great idea. What animal do you have to show us? I brought our Lydia T. Musk duck. What do you mean? What, you, what happened? What? How did it get out? Wait, has something happened, Bindi? Where is the Lydia T. Musk duck? Uh, it, um, it, it is, it's gone. It escaped. Escaped? Uh, it, it's cool. There is no issue. No need to be concerned. What? Uh, um, Ren, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to Bindi? go. I'm Bindi? just, uh, oh, uh, yeah, okay, well, we're off to a quick break. Welcome back. Time for a dose of entertainment, and here with the prescription is Bob Cheapix. It's become almost routine for us to tune in to the latest funeral of someone of note. The entertainment, the production value, the star-studded cast, it has become our newest and best form of reality TV, and we are hooked. The Queen's Funeral was the latest blockbuster of the year that set a brand new precedent for future high concept entertainment. With a high production value, prestigious cast, and a plot full of twists and turns that had people reaching for more popcorn. Most recently, Japan had their own state funeral for their former Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe. With more than 4,000 people in attendance, including numerous world leaders, a 19-gun salute, and a gigantic flower display. The opulence and extravagance attracted much fanfare. Ironically, it was not all sunshine and roses. As many protested the state funeral for its arbitrariness, Abe's support of the Unification Church and the exorbitant price tag, with rumors that it was more expensive than Queen Lizzie's itself. Lest we spend another episode talking about the Queen and the questionably placed candle, let's switch our attention to the other funerals that have attracted much hubbub. From Mikhail Gorbachev, the last leader of the Soviet Union. Thousands lined up to pay their respects, notably except for Vladimir Putin, who cited his busy work schedule for his absence. It must take a lot of work to run your government into the ground. Or Michael Gadinsky, who booked out Rod Laver Arena, with headliners such as Kylie Minogue, Jimmy Barnes, Paul Kelly, and Ed Sheeran, who wouldn't want front row tickets to the concert. Did I also mention that it was his funeral service? Shane Warren's send-off was larger than life indeed. 
with Jam TV boasting that at least 1 billion people would tune into the event. There was certainly a spin on those numbers. Even Australia's own queen and icon, Olivia Newton-John, will be receiving a state funeral. Here's to hoping for a Greece dance medley. With all the sensationalism that has surrounded state funerals nowadays, we can't help but wonder, what's the point? Why do we pay an absurd amount of money for the funerals of those who can afford it themselves? Since when did funerals and memorial services become such lavish and publicized international releases? Perhaps it says something about society's obsession with the pomp, the pageantry, and of course, the drama. With reality TV becoming more and more unreal nowadays, we turn to what is truly the last of unscripted content, because there are just some things you can't make up. Forget the grand final, we have a funeral to watch. Uh-huh, uh, let's take a look at this. I don't know what to tell you, Ren. It is madness here, chaos, complete mayhem. The Lydia T. Musk duck, smart birds. They let all of the animals out. We've got the cat or crocodile running around delusionally trying to hand out guns to children. Uh, uh, the Anne in cassowary, he's trying to resurrect the long abandoned conservative national exhibit by yelling something about a final solution. And the Keneally kangaroo rat, just being mean to everyone, honestly, real mean girl stuff. And the lambing tiger snake, we're just trying to keep off of Facebook. Oh. Oh, is that, is that, is that the Hansing Dingo? Go, you, go get them. Get them before they eat more babies. <sighs> As they say down under, Ren, uh, uh, Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Moving on now, and Optus is at the center of one of its biggest scandals since the World Cup flopped us bungle four years ago, with personal details of millions of Australians potentially exposed. For further details on the matter, let's head over to our mindset coach, Phoebe Love. Thanks, Jan. Everyone's got it wrong. What Australia just witnessed last week was a great act of kindness and an ambitious attempt from an amateur anara to enter the big boys club. Let's put this in context. Big tech companies like Facebook and Google have been stealing and storing your data for years now. And then out of nowhere came this aspiring geek with a soft heart and everyone lost their shit. See, I believe you should focus on the other side, which clearly shows that this was done out of concern for the company, Optus, and us the consumers. This was done to show that it can be done. It's a profession and intervention. Look it up, bug hunter. The hacker has since apologized and said they would have reported the problem if they could do that. Sounds to me like giving the career and social services. Because why does it have to be evil, inconsiderate, incompetent, unfair, and not bold, ambitious, daring? I'm sure we can all agree this is not the year for Optus or its chief optimism officer, Gary Ricardo. One is paying millions to save the contacts and the other is being paid millions to end the contract. And honestly, data, internet, hackers, this is all made up bullshit. The true enemy is inside you. And the real threat is not your money, but your inner peace. So go, take new pictures for your passports and driver's license, which you don't even have to pay for now. And just be happy got done. I think I'm done. Goodbye, Ren. Love the perspective, Phoebe. Staying on brand now, and let's check in with our dear friend, Scamantha. Thanks, Ren. Get excited this November because it's all about the party. What's that? You're not invited. Nonsense. Everyone is. As long as you consume too much coffee a day, only wear black, or identify yourself as a Victorian. Even better, you're invited to three biggest parties in the area. Good luck starting the vaccine process of choosing which one to attend. Luckily, we have some essential party kits to give you a head start. Let's see. Here in your red party kit, level crossing removal, 
level crossing removal and health funding. And over to your blue party kit. Even more health funding, mandatory return to city offices and lobsters. Over to your green party kit, cannabis. The chance to become a Republican and all fun with no responsibility. We are not against but do not have much info on fringe parties that do not abide by these color themes or one that is hosted by a certain Pauline. You know what they say, have a bowl and paint the town red or even blue or, or green or mix it up and, and get teal. I also wanted to thank all our customers for purchasing exclusive The Struggle products throughout the season. Remember, if you are reluctant to buy something because your friends say it is a scam, it is not. It is just me, your reliable Scamantha. Thank you, Ren. <laughs> Love a good party bag. Now, let's head over to the latest trends on TikTok. And who would have thought? Ren! Ren! Oh, <laughs> yes, Mark. I got the new TikTok you were talking about. Oh, right, that's wonderful. Oh. Oh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, no, Mark, this song's over 10 years old now. Welcome back. Now, turning back to TikTok, and would you believe... Ren, Ren, can you please explain to me what that TikTok thing is about? Oh, look, Margo, okay, how about we just cross to our resident TikTok expert, Xanthi, who should be able to clear up any questions you've got. Hi. I've been waiting all season for this one. Okay, so we're gonna start off. First of all, Ned from the Try Guys just cheated on his wife. And it's just John Mulaney all over again. Anyways, I think John Mulaney's gonna cheat on Olivia Wilde, but you didn't hear that from me. I know him personally, obviously, this white girl from Australia. We have a very close bond. Anyways, the Lisa Rinna Eminem meme is unfortunately on its way out and will never be forgotten. Lisa has jumped in on the trend as well. She posted a TikTok about it. And I love that for her. It's exactly what she should have done and now it's over. Same with the Lee Michelle Can't Read meme. She's just... She's just when celebrities get in on things, it's just not fun. Anyways, what else do we have? The persistence of the 27 part split screen Family Guy audios on TikTok. It's serving, it's slaying, it's giving, it's everything that you want. There's been American Dad versions, there's been Modern Family versions. It's just not what you want. You stick with the classic and it's Family Guy. I want Family Guy. 27 parts with a little mobile game down the bottom with people playing really badly at and then Chinese subtitles in 27 parts. Okay, 27 parts is the best thing. I cannot stress this enough, 27 parts. Is there anything else? No, bye. The weird and wonderful world of TikTok. Oh, I'm going to take a lie down. My, my head is spinning. Good idea, Marg. Uh, let's check in on someone else on the couch, our sports therapy patient. Oh my goodness, did you hear Tom Hardy won a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition? Not to be confused with Tom Brady, who's actually, actually another- I'm gonna stop you there. I'm afraid you've exceeded the number of appointments subsidized under Medicare. What do you mean? I thought I got 10 free appointments, or is it 20 free appointments with a mental health care plan, or whatever, however many it is? Well, first of all, this is a physiotherapy appointment, but, um, are you with Optus? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, but I have other patients today, and I think you've got to look into replacing your Medicare card. But I have so much to talk about still. What about the AFLW Fantasy Football League promoting women in sport, or, I don't know, Federer retiring? We still haven't talked about that yet. Or even, or even, um... I don't know, Hawthorne Football Club being racist. I mean, it's not really a surprise, but like, I still haven't- You really I haven't... have to leave. But what about, what about Daniel Ricciardo? He still doesn't have a seat next year. Next. Tough luck. Now let's see how Karen Kovetch is faring. I'm currently enjoying a tropical getaway and soaking in the sunshine. But that will not stop me from fulfilling my role as the president of the Neighbourhood Watch. I am absolutely outraged at Karen's Diner and their disgraceful behaviour. Now I have been aware of the diner's existence for quite some time, but have been too emotionally disturbed to discuss it. Until now. This week, the integrity of the franchise was finally called into question. The staff members have been accused of taking their rude behaviour too far and breaching company policies. What's your one thing you- The neighbourhood- The sign says, no body shape. The establishment 
if you can even call it that, makes a mockery of my people. It shamelessly tarnishes the Karen name. I am completely and utterly disgusted to even be associated with the catastrophic corporation. I have been wrongfully vilified by association and I will not stand for it. The behaviour of Karen's diner is absolutely unacceptable and I will not tolerate it. Fighting the big issues, Karen. Now let's see what's coming up after the struggle. Welcome, bros and broskies, to my special vacation episode of The Project, airing tonight after the struggle, where I will be talking to the president. Not the president of any particular country, but the president of my heart. This man, Donald Trump. We'll be discussing a loss of innocence. There's a picture of Hunter Biden and Barron Trump. Barron looks so innocent, <laughs> and Hunter doesn't look so innocent. Our mutual mortal enemies. I don't know why he hates me, but he hates me. And why we are mad as hell. The level of anger in this country is incredible. We discuss all this and more. If we wanted to do this, we'd do it through the basement and we wouldn't let anybody take pictures. Check it all out tonight after the struggle. <laughs> No thanks. Right, well, that pretty much brings us to the end of the season. But in light of news that Australian workers are experiencing the most burnout in the world, before we close the curtains completely, here's a little ode to exhausted employees. Never had my Broadway breakthrough They found out my sob story wasn't true Called me fake as a woke bloke in boat shoes I'm too tired to be funny At last, I'm done being so macho Just need my couch and my nachos Did it just for Murdoch money to be funny Looking on the bright side is my regret Spinning stories breaking a sweat Tried to make life's much more sad I'm too tired to be funny Vegan goddess Insta diety Burnout came and I lost my energy Ego died along with my potential Still I remain hot and influential Wanna be news anchor That's me baby No jokes are landing Somebody please come me. Spend so much time here. Guess I'm the bunny. <laughs> uh, I'm too tired to be funny. I'll take back what's mine. For now I'm a punchline. The worst the states has seen. Right next to Adam Lavie. No thanks, we've heard they just hired Kyle Would rather be stuck in a dunny Than listen to his so-called funny The struggle is real, even off-screen But we do it for the dopamine If we resort to be in honey It, it just, just means we're too tired to be funny Reach that time of the season All the good things must end for a reason My 
like that try guy who's now in trees and we're too tired to be funny. Okay. Come on. <laughs> oh my <Hey> gosh. <laughs>